Today, I'm going to walk through how you can do a file upload in Next.js 13 in the new app directory with absolutely no dependencies. You don't need to use a third party library anymore. You can simply use the native functionality on the web side and the server side. I'm going to show you how to do this with a client component, which is basically regular react and handling it in an API route on Next.js 13. And then in the second half, we're going to do the same thing, but only use a react server component and the new alpha server actions in Next.js 13. So if you want to jump ahead and see how I do it for the react server component, feel right ahead. I think both of these ways are totally legit. So pick whichever one you want or learn them both with that. Let's dive into the code. Here we have a regular Next.js 13 application. I've just created it and I've outlined a couple of the files we're going to use. The first way we're walking through this is with the client component. And so I have use client at the top of this page. Now you could move this out to another component if you wanted to and just have um, this be a react server component. But because I'm showing this mostly as a demo, I'm turning the entire thing into a client component. So I don't need to build another component. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need some place to store the state of the file upload itself. So with that, we're just going to use use state in react and set it to a file. Now this is a web file type. And because we haven't set anything here, the file by definition is either a file or it's undefined, which is exactly what we want. The next thing we want to do is we're going to want to have the actual form. Now this is going to be a very basic form, nothing crazy, and you can add more content to it if you'd like. So here we have the form element with an on submit handler for when the user submits the form and we have a single basic input. This input on change is going to set the file to the um, events target files attribute. And because we're only ever expecting one file here, we can simply take the first one. And then when they submit it, it's going to fire the on submit handler. Now the on submit handler for the form needs to take the form data, create an HTTP request and send it off to our API route. And we'll write the API route next. So what that will look like is something like this. Here we have an on submit handler and we're going to prevent the default because we don't want the browser to do the default action of the form, which would be to make a post request or a git request, depending on the form action. Now, if there is no file return, that means the user didn't actually add a file. So we don't have anything to handle. Otherwise, we're going to have a try catch to handle errors and we're going to create a new form data. And then we're going to set the file that they've selected into this. And then we're going to make a fetch request. And this is going to go to API upload method post because we want it to be a post request with the body as the form data. Now, when you do it this way, and you set the data to the form, when you set the body to be the form data, it's going to automatically set the headers and handle all the multi-part form uploading for you. It's all just going to work. Let's go ahead and test that so you can see what I mean. Here's our create next app, very basic. We're going to choose a random file here. We'll choose a, we'll choose one of my website images. And we're going to go ahead and click upload and it's going to fail because we don't have our API route yet, but we can take a look at the HTTP request and what it's done. So here we know it's going to the right place, API upload, and we got an error, but that's okay. And you can look at the payload that it sent. It sent the form data with a binary file and you can look at all of the parsed, um, web kit, boundary form data that kind of shows all this information to see that we are sending the correct information. We just haven't implemented the slash API upload route yet to handle it. So let's go do that. Here we have our API route file. Now you don't have to prefix it with API. That's just a convention because we're in the app directory. We can export the HTTP methods we want to support. In this case, we're only supporting a post request because that's all this route needs to handle. The next thing that this API route needs to do is it needs to get the information from the request and you do that with a wait and then whatever your request is form data. And this is going to take the information in the request and make sure it's been uh, totally sent to the server and then pull that out into this variable. Now we want to get the file 
And because we're using a git here, it could be multiple types of information. You could be getting a string value. You could be getting some other value. You could be getting a file value. And we know that we're sending a file. So we're going to cast it as a known to file. So we know that we have this file object. Now it could be null if it doesn't exist for some reason, but if it does exist, we're expecting it to be a file. So to handle the edge case where it's not found at all, we want to bail early. So we don't need to handle anything after this. So if the file doesn't exist, go ahead and return a nice JSON response saying success false. Now you could also return a 400 or 500 or some other HTTP error. It just depends on what you want your API to do. Now the real magic of this entire route is taking the file, which is a web, which is a web specific API and turning it into some form of bytes that Node.js and other server APIs understand. And the way we can do that is this. The file has an array buffer, which is going to return a promise for an array buffer, which takes the bytes and puts it into this file type. And then the actual buffer implementation can take that and turn this object into a buffer. Now, Node.js knows a lot about buffers and can handle it perfectly. So once it's been put into this buffer type, you can use any Node.js API you want and it'll just work. So you could upload it to AWS at this point. You could save it to the file system. You could send it in some other, you know, an email or something at this point, this is where the common code you're going to write stops and you take this buffer object and you go ahead and do whatever you want with it. Now, just to show you how this works, we're going to take it and we're just going to write it into our temporary directory. And that's going to be our path with the buffer information write file we're in pmp types node node modules we're in node land now so this is a node.js api where we're going to write some data to the file system and because we're dealing with buffers we can just pass it in and node.js will know how to handle it so to test this now we can go right back to our application and just click upload again and you'll see now that we get a 200 okay and the response is success true and if we look at our server logs, it'll say, open this random file to see it. And this is in our temp directory again. So we know it's not the one we just uploaded. And when we go ahead and do that, we get the picture that we uploaded. So that's all you have to do. The magic is taking the file, turning it into an array buffer, and then moving that those bytes into a buffer object. You can use this in any library you want to then handle the file upload. Now to do this with a react server component, it's very, very similar. In fact, most of the code is identical, but instead of handling the form upload in an API route, we handle it in a server action within the react server component itself. Let's dive in. So to use this, you have to make sure you have the server actions turned on in your next configuration. Now in the future, this will be on by default, but for right now, it's an experimental flag. I've created a new page under server just because this is a server component. And this is where we're going to implement the react server component. Now it's going to look very similar, but we don't have use client at the top of the page because this is no longer a client component. Instead, it's a react server component and the form no longer needs to store its state inside the react state um, hook. Instead, it's just going to store the state within it. And the form action is going to handle that form state. Now, what does that form action look like? If you watch the first half of the video, you're going to see that it's very similar to the API route. In fact, that's basically what it is. It's an API route masquerading as a react server server action. So here we have an upload action and that's what's passed into the form here. And we have to define use server to make sure that the action is run as a server action. 
and we're going to get the file in the same way by making sure we get the file type and that's defined here with the name file and we cast it to a file. If we don't have a file, we're going to throw an error and this is going to just be an early bailout. So we don't execute the rest of the code. And then we do the same thing where we take the file and get the array buffer and the array buffer can then be turned into a buffer object. And the buffer object is something that all Node.js APIs know how to handle. And so we'll do the same thing here where we're just going to make a temporary path and we're going to write the file to it. And then you can go ahead and see what it looks like. So this way, you know that it was uploaded. So let's go ahead and just delete that file. And then in our test, we'll go to the server page and this is our react server component. And here we're going to pick something as well. We'll pick this image and we're going to upload it. And you can see our HTTP request got a 200. Okay. Sent the file as a binary and we didn't get any useful response. But if we look at our server logs, it also says open up this file to see it. So we can go ahead and just take that. And this is the new one the file that we just uploaded. So that's all there is to it. Using only native APIs, you can now take a file and upload it either using client components or server components. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.